My life's an open book. You read? With her famous porcelain skin and piercing blue eyes, Nicole Kidman can appear unreadable, bordering on cold. But as an actress, she uses this to her advantage. In so many of her roles, she peels back the layers of that self-possessed exterior to reveal something powerful and surprising simmering underneath. And why haven't you ever been jealous about me? The unifying thread in Kidman's performances is that there's something happening under the surface. I wrestle alone in the dark, in the deep dark, and that only I can know. Only I can understand my own condition. She always gives us the feeling that there's going to be more to her character than initially meets the eye. I'm trying to decide whether I'm happy or sad. People usually know. However much her roles vary, Kidman time and time again exposes the darkness under the perfect facade. Personally speaking, I can't wait to watch life tear you apart subverts character types we think we know, and radiates emotion and inner life even when she's playing someone who keeps it all bottled up. Things aren't nice anymore. So as she lights up the screen once again in Aquaman, let's take a look at Kidman's diverse body of work to see how her trademark is revealing the time-honored truth that looks can be deceiving. You said that you loved me, and, and, and I wondered if, if- It was just- an act? Yes. Of course. Before we go on, we want to tell you a little bit about this video's sponsor. Mubi is a curated film streaming service with a twist. You get 30 films per month, a new film every day. It's a hand-picked selection of movie gems from around the world. We're huge fans of Mubi here at Screen Prism, so click the link in our description below to get a full month of Mubi for free. Perhaps my self-worth is made up of how other people see me. Kidman's specialty is revealing that the face we present to the world is only half the story. In some of her most famous roles, she plays a character who seems to have it all, but wants more, or is keeping a big secret. And we have this... dirty secret. In Big Little Lies, Kidman Celeste is covering up her husband's abuse behind a perfect facade. You are so bad. Love it when I'm bad. So bad. You are so bad. We are so bad. Even before she lets us in on Celeste's secret, Kidman projects an underlying anxiety in Celeste. My superpower. I actually get it from mom. We see a disconnect between how she presents herself and what she really feels. Something wounded about her, if you ask me. And throughout the show, Kidman is always giving us two layers at once. A woman putting up a front and the troubled waters underneath that placid surface. Here, when her friend Madeline tells her she should go back to work as a lawyer. You're gonna be a lawyer again. No. <laughs> Celeste's pained look is not the response we'd expect from a woman getting praised. We see on her face that she's thinking about why she can't resume her career. Her husband won't allow it. He just likes me to be at home in the house. But in the next breath, she surprises us with this outburst of elation. I f***ing miss it! <laughs> Kidman makes Celeste's transitions from one state of mind to another lightning quick. Like when she's playfully stripping for Perry via Skype, spots a bruise he's given her, and abruptly stops. Okay, that's enough, naughty boy. Or when Perry has just aggressively grabbed her and she snaps into mom mode. Okay, let's go, sweetie. The speed and fluidity of these changes are a sign of Kidman's control as an actor. Less skilled actors take longer to make these shifts and let us see the strings. I did not hit her. I did not. Oh, hi, Mark. But in real life, people, like Celeste, switch between modes in a flash. When Celeste goes to the couple's therapist, Dr. Reisman, we see Celeste getting defensive as the narrative she's created about her life is challenged. We both become violent sometimes. I take my share of the blame. He hurts you. Look. I'm not a victim here. She thinks she's better than this, because she's also bought into the idea of her life that she's been projecting. I'm madly in love with him. 
He adores me. He, he, he treats me like a goddess. The dramatic power of these scenes comes out as the image she's been maintaining has to crumble and give way to the inner reality she finally acknowledges. That must have been terrifying. Did you think of leaving him then? I've thought of leaving him many times. In Stanley Kubrick's Eyes Wide Shut as Alice, Kidman shows how she can use the physical aspects of performance to hint at what's going on under the surface in her character. From the very opening image, Kidman's performance is all about what she tells us through her body. Here, Alice undresses from behind. We can't see her face yet, and this image announces to us what this movie will be about. The interplay between domestic boredom and anonymous desire. In the next sequence of Alice and her husband Bill getting ready for the party, her relaxed demeanor conveys their comfort with each other, the way they don't really see each other. Is my hair okay? It's great. You're not even looking at it. The character she's initially presenting to us here is a sweet, even slightly bashful wife and mother, composed and put together, who evidently has it all. But as soon as she gets to the Christmas party and gets a moment away from Bill, Watch Alice's physical looseness, conveying her feeling of reckless abandon as she flirts with a stranger. Didn't he wind up all by himself, crying his eyes out in some place with a very bad climate? Later, as she takes off her glasses and looks into the mirror, her gaze is at once alluring and frightening. This intense look seems to convey to us that her most powerful desire comes out once she's taken the glasses off and is making love to a man she can't see, effectively a stranger. The glasses may strike us in different moments as sophisticated and sexy or casual and domestic, yet her use of the glasses makes us aware of her female gaze. And the question of Alice's desire is very much what sets the events of the film in motion. If you men only knew. Let's look especially at Kidman's physicality in the famous bedroom scene. Her body is open and vulnerable here, as she reveals her most secret fantasy about having sex with a stranger she once saw. And I thought if he wanted me, even if it was only for one night. I was ready to give up everything. But the hysterical fits of laughter moving through her are almost hostile, as if she's laughing at Bill. The erotic femininity she exudes seems to strike Bill as threatening, confrontational. Millions of years of evolution. Right? Right? Men have to stick it in every place they can, but for women, women it is just about security and commitment and whatever the f else. She tells her story in a slow, dreamy way, making it feel like her character is getting lost in this memory. He glanced at me as he walked past, just a glance. Judging by Bill's shock, this is a side of Alice that usually stays hidden. So the way that Kidman externalizes this part of her character through her body, pacing, and tone of voice makes us feel like we're getting a rare glimpse inside Alice's head. And yet it was weird, because at the same time, you were dearer to me than ever. On TV is where we learn about who we really are. Because what's the point of doing anything worthwhile if nobody's watching? One of the key techniques Kidman uses is setting up a character who seems coherent and knowable, only to completely surprise us by revealing that we didn't know this person at all. As Satine in Moulin Rouge, she's a courtesan who morphs to play to men's fantasies. What's his type? Wilting flower? Bright and bubbly? Ah! Or oh, smoldering temptress. But Satine's pretending goes beyond just turning herself into a dream woman. She's also hiding her tuberculosis. And what's touching about her secret is that, in the end, she's so vulnerable and helpless. <gasps> go. Go. While the character we've gotten to know throughout this whole movie seemed entirely sure and sophisticated, almost infallible. Diamonds are a girl's best friend. 
In To Die For, Kidman plays an aspiring news anchor who's using people's perception of her to her advantage. I'm a professional person, for Christ's sake. I come from a good home. Who do you think a jury would believe? Here, as in a number of her roles, she eventually reveals a darkness and agency in her character that wasn't evident at first, and we watch her character manipulate others the same way Kidman manipulated us. He doesn't deserve to live. In Dogville, she plays Grace, a woman who comes to a small town and is exploited by the people there, acting like a martyr even as they abuse her in ever more egregious ways. But at the end, she turns the tables and reveals a vengeful side that we never could have anticipated. Do the kids first and make the mother watch. Tell her you'll stop if she can hold back her tears. What's interesting is that she manages to make her violent retribution follow from her performance in the earlier parts of the film. The character still feels like the same person. Watch the restraint and quiet grace in her behavior. If there's any town, this world will be better without this is it. So this continuity highlights that complexity can exist within the same person. And our initial perceptions of someone can overlook a lot about who they are on the deepest level. In The Beguiled, the younger girl characters wear their feelings on their sleeves, while Kidman's steely character Miss Martha keeps her cards close to the chest. She's performing the image of the proper Southern woman. I wouldn't say it's entirely suitable for a young lady's school, but we know Miss Edwin is accustomed to town society with different views. Then, in sudden, unpredictable moments, her repressed lust emerges in interactions with the Union Army Corporal. Good night, Corporal. Good night, ma'am. In the others, the twist ending is so shocking because of how effectively, as always, Kidman has brought us into her way of seeing things. Where is my daughter? <laughs> what have you done with my daughter? So Kidman surprises us by presenting a character we think we understand, and then undermining what she spent all that time setting up as she reveals the calculation, plotting, or secret keeping that these women engage in. Yes, Lyra. You're mine. Kidman's performances expose how readily we do tend to accept people's surface presentations of themselves in our real lives. She is so pure and delicate and innocent. In Big Little Eyes, everyone in Celeste's community envies her, and even her best friends can't see past this facade. She can hardly relate to my life. What on earth is she going to do to identify with yours, which is just a tick north of perfect? My life isn't perfect, Madeline. Bad things have happened to me. And Kidman's gift as an actress is her ability to dupe us in the same way. We buy into her character's initial personas, and when their hidden selves come out, we have to ask ourselves why we were so quickly fooled by appearances. Maybe because you're the mother of my child, and I know you would never be unfaithful to me. You are very, very sure of yourself, aren't you? Someone has to die in order that the rest of us should value life more. Kidman is often cast as someone with emotional restraint, but she's carrying a deep well of emotion beneath the surface. He's God, after all. Why didn't he just make another angel? In Rabbit Hole, Kidman plays a mother grieving her child's death, and her repressed way of coping contrasts sharply with her husband's grieving process. What, you took the paintings off the fridge? To save them, to save them. They are in a box downstairs. Okay, his clothes. We don't need all that stuff, Howie, we just the, don't. The, the, want she uses control to communicate emotional pain. Kidman manages to exude this feeling of an inner life, even when her characters are in denial or trying more than anything to hide their feelings. Then it's all the more powerful when she does snap. It's your illness, it not is, you. It is my voice. It's not your it's voice. Mine and mine it's the alone. voice that you hear. It is not, it is mine! I'm dying in this town! As Virginia Woolf in The Hours, the part that earned her a Best Actress Oscar, at all times, Kidman makes us sense this author's great intellect and understanding, and her mysterious inner world, while at the same time we see that this woman is constantly struggling with mental illness. You live with the threat, you tell me. You live with the threat of my extinction. Leonard, 
I live with it too. The many layers to Kidman's performance, the number of different things she conveys about the character within the same scene, remind us of the complexity of Wolf's own writing, which often requires the reader to keep track of numerous parentheticals and levels of consciousness at once. Or did it not become consoling to believe that death ended absolutely? What's most amazing about Nicole Kidman is that as much as she's admired for her beauty, ultimately she captivates us for what's underneath. Her characters contain multitudes. She manifests the thoughts, feelings, and conflicts that are always bubbling underneath the surface inside of us, but only boil over from time to time. All this while I've been packing ice around my heart. I don't make it melt. And all this makes Kidman one of the most influential movie stars of our era. When will I begin to live again? Hi guys, this is Grace, and today I want to talk to you about one of our favorite places to watch movies, Mubi. Mubi is a treasure trove of films from around the globe. Every day, a new film is added and the oldest is taken away. So in this world where it's very easy to spend hours debating what you should watch, Mubi is like having a really cool friend with amazing taste in movies, making it so much easier for you. They feature hard-to-come-by masterpieces, indie festival darlings, influential art house and foreign films, lesser-known films by your favorite famous directors, and more. Plus, you can even download the films to watch offline. And there are no ads ever. One movie you can watch right now on Mubi is This Time Tomorrow. It's an intimate, naturalistic portrait of a teenager's relationship with her parents from emerging filmmaker Lena Rodriguez. We can't recommend Mubi highly enough. You can try it out for free for a whole month. Just click the link in the description below.